Hello there, my fellow mech warriors, and welcome to another dose on the Battle Mechs of Battletech. Today's video and mech is once again sponsored by a generous subscriber. In fact, it is the same generous subscriber who sponsored five other Battle Mech videos, most recently the Mighty Warhawk slash Masakari. And speaking of Mighty Mechs, today's subject is also a massive and powerful clan mech known as the Blood Asp. Fun fact, if you take a look at the very first picture of it, you may notice it looks suspiciously similar to the Warlord class Titan from Warhammer 40k. Or at least a smaller version of it. That being said, I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A few stats on this bad boy include it is obviously an assault class, massing 90 tons, a surprisingly high top speed of 65 km an hour, and a ridiculous cost of 29.4 million sea bills. The Blood Asp was created by the Clan Star Adder as an insult to their enemies, the Clan Blood Spirit. It has a great amount of pod space for its size, too. It is based on an older Omni Mech assault design known as the Kingfisher. But the Blood Asp adds an XL engine, but unfortunately its space constraints force the replacement of the Kingfisher's ferrofibrous armor with standard plate. Thus, the Blood Asp incorporates 16 tons of this standard armor and 14 double heatsinks in the base chassis. It was one of the first mechs to field the breakthrough heavy laser technology, with the Blood Asp proving to be an offensive powerhouse. It could deliver incredible damage at all ranges, and could make short work of any enemy regardless of size or class. The Blood Asps were assigned to the Clan Star Adder Frontline Galaxies. Alpha Galaxy received the most of these, while the other Delta Gamma Galaxy and Kappa Galaxies only received a few. The main weapons of this thing are two Gauss rifles that can strip off nearly a ton of armor at a range of 660 meters although these do not have a lot of ammo, so the mech warriors have to be careful with when and how they shoot. These are then backed up by four heavy medium lasers, two medium pulse lasers and one streak SRM-6 for close range work. To aid in the heat dissipation, the main configuration has an extra four double heat tanks. Now let us move on to the alternative configurations. Unfortunately, there's few actual artworks on this thing, so we're gonna have to rely mainly on pictures from Mech Warriors Online. And as usual, the pictures are not always representative of the actual variants I describe. Configuration A was built for Assault. It has a targeting computer to guide two ERPPCs and two heavy large lasers. With an extra 11 heatsinks, it still fails to keep the configuration cool at all times. And even with the addition of jump jets to jump up to 90 meters at a time. It also has an ECM suite to protect itself against enemy electronics. Configuration B is more oriented towards a fire support class, using a Gauss rifle and two LRM-20s with Artemis IV fire control system. Just in case the enemy gets close though, it also has a four medium pulse lasers and an ECM suite. Two extra heatsinks from the base design ensure that this design stays cool. Configuration C is a heavy ammo dependent version, using two Ultra Autocannon 10s and one LB20X Autocannon for close range dueling. Unfortunately, as you might imagine, the ammo runs out quite quickly, so you must be careful how you spend it. Finally, it has one ER large laser for long range support. Configuration D is more similar to the primary, although it does tend to be a bit more long range support. It has a Gauss rifle, two ER large lasers, and three Ultra Auto Cannon 2s. Another two heavy medium lasers allow it to stay useful even after running out of ammo. Configuration E uses the ATM technology in the form of four ATM frees. ATM, if you don't know, stands for Advanced Tactical Missile. Just one ton of ammo for each pair doesn't allow the weapons to make the most of their flexibility. A targeting computer guides two ERPPCs and two medium pulse lasers. 
It also has four jump jets, enabling it to vault up to 120 meters at a time, with extra heat sinks to keep the heat levels low. Configuration F was developed during the Jihad, with this one designed for close quarters combat. It has been given four Streak SRM-6 launchers with three tons of ammo, and two medium pulse lasers and two AP Gauss rifles for short-range support. For its medium and long range, it also mounts two ERPPCs and a plasma cannon with one ton of ammo. To cope with the heat buildup, it has an additional five double heat sinks, bringing the total to 19. Configuration G is the last of the cannon configurations. It was also developed during the Jihad, centering around the new Hyper Assault Gauss Rifle technology. Thus it has one Class 40 Hyper Assault Gauss Rifle fitted in the left arm and part of the left torso, with four tons of ammo. As alternative weapons it has two ER Lodge lasers in the right arm and right torso, two medium pulse lasers and two heavy medium lasers. The direct fire weapons are backed up by a targeting computer for extra accuracy. To help with the heat, it also has three extra double heat sinks, bringing its total to 17. A few non canon variants of the Blood Asp include From the game Mech Assault 2 Lone Wolf, we have a Blood Asp with two shoulder mounted plasma PPCs and four machine guns, decimating enemies at short range. Along with this, it also had four Javelin long range missiles for long range suppression. The Star Adder chassis in this game had two shoulder mounted plasma PPCs and four autocannons mounted in the arms, in addition to one flamethrower for decimating infantry at close range. From MechWarrior Online, we have the BAS Rancor Hero Mech. This one has an ER large and an ER medium laser in each arm supported by an ER large laser and an ATM-9 in each side torso. This one has no less than 24 double heat sinks and a combined 4 tons of ATM ammo. Now, because that was pretty much all the lore on the Blood Asp, unfortunately, I figured I could expand this video a little bit by talking about its ancestor, an older assault Omnimech known as the Kingfisher. I'm not gonna describe the Kingfisher in its totality right here, but I do want to make an overview to maybe help you understand where the Blood Asp came from. So, the Kingfisher. Obviously this was also an assault design at 90 tons, a speed exactly the same as the Blood Asp of 65 km an hour, but surprisingly the biggest difference between this and the Blood Asp was the price with the Kingfisher costing only half of the price of the Blood Asp, at 13 million sea bills. The Kingfisher was an early clan assault Omnimech, which may have influenced multiple other assault Omnimech designs. It was rugged and maneuverable, and the trades made it an ideal choice for take and hold operations too. The Kingfisher in its own turn was based on the powerful but disgraced pulverizer design with the clan Snow Raven debiting the Kingfisher in 2887 as an early second generation Omnimech. At the time, its speed, its great armor protection and overall reliability and resilience have kept it in use for a long time afterward even during the clan invasion. It was used especially by clan Ghost Bear alongside more recent assault Omnimechs like the Executioner. The tough Kingfisher mounts 14.5 tons of ferrofibrous armor in an endosteel chassis, which is the maximum amount the chassis can take. Unlike other, more modern frontline Omnimechs, the Kingfisher has a standard engine. It also has 17 fixed double heat sinks, forcing three of them to be mounted outside of the engine. Its weapons make the mech quite effective at all ranges. The main configuration of the Kingfisher is best at medium short range, with an LRM-10 launcher the only legitimate long range threat. Outside of that it has two large and two medium pulse lasers which are very accurate, and the Streak SRM-6 cannot fire unless it achieves a target lock first, making it ideally suited for greener pilots and an urban environment. Last but not least it has an arm mounted ER small laser. The Kingfisher did not actually excel in any particular way, 
It was well armored and had respectable pod space, despite lacking an extra light engine. Its newer configurations have given it a new role on the battlefield. It now pairs well with the likes of the Deimos and the Omen, which are rolling off the Snow Raven assembly line. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the mighty blood asp assault Omnimech, and its father of a kind, the Kingfisher, for today. Like most, if not all, clan assault designs, it does pack a lot of firepower in a very resilient frame. What about you, though? Are you familiar with the Blood Asp, or the Kingfisher for that matter? Are they among your favorite clan designs, or why not battle-make designs overall? Do share any thoughts or experiences you might have had with them in the comments below if you want. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome and healthy day. This is GDN signing out.